Hi, my name is Travis Cassie. I run sales operations for our enterprise sales organization at ADP. Uh, we're a human capital management provider that sells payroll, HR services, and those sorts of things. I've got a team that spans everything from uh, pre-sales engineering through training, uh, demo creation, uh, RFP support, as well as reporting, analytics, and territory design. Awesome. How many salespeople does ADP have currently? Altogether, uh, around 7,000. So that's a big yes. number. It's, it's a huge number, yeah. It's like a city. <laughs> yeah. Of those 7,000, a portion of them are inside sales, but a large majority of them right. are field facing. What out percentage of the is inside? I want to say we've got about 1,000 uh, inside right. salespeople okay. with the rest outside. So uh, uh, describe your definition of sales enablement. So I'll take the broader ADP picture of sales enablement rather than my specific team because I'm one of five or six um, sales enablement leaders within ADP. Sales enablement really includes the elements that help sales achieve productivity gains and also create new ways for salespeople to learn, to deliver our solutions, uh, really to to create wow experiences with the customers. And in our case, what that includes, we've got teams that do our event planning, our go-to-market messaging, so taking what marketing puts together on a specific product, but then turning it into how a customer might want to hear it. We've got groups that are focused on lead development, automation, salesforce.com, and several other technologies embedded within our sales organizations. And we have a team that builds out um, applications, so iPad apps that we can use as a sales organization to get better connected to our customer base. So with all those moving parts, how do you measure ROI? I don't believe that our function can truly measure ROI impact because it's not solely the ownership of sales enablement that drives ROI. It's the salesperson, the sales leadership, the marketing organization, as well as the product development teams that are creating the products that we're selling. So any one of those elements can have a direct impact on our overall success. So there are too many so, external factors. Yeah, I think it's well, that uh, multi-point uh, attribution is just too uh, difficult to get at. you could measure the uh, ramp up time of salespeople. You could, and right. um, but that's also impacted by things like what kind of person are you hiring? Do you change the right. level of and the quality of the person right. that you've got? Right. There are definitely metrics right. that you can look so at. So what are your personal standards for yourself? How do you measure your own success within the organization? So I tend to take a longer term view of how we're impacting the organization and thankfully I've got a leader who feels the same way. We're looking at consistency and growth over time. And if we can transform the sales organization so that it's got consistent double-digit growth rates or consistently high performance, low attrition within the sales force. Those are the kind of metrics that'll help us understand whether we're doing a good job as a right. whole, rather than getting into the more targeted measures of, did I increase annual sales performance for a new hire? Right. It's just, it gets away from the issues that we talked about just a moment. What is the most recent idea that you've implemented that you were really thrilled about? So, um, one of the coolest things that I've had the opportunity to work on is a platform that we're calling Vitality. And normally in a sales organization, you'll look at things like what's the person's percentage of plan, what's their pipeline look like, very sales specific right. metrics. What we did was we took a step beyond that to start identifying the traits and techniques that a salesperson would use to be effective. So we built out a, a, an entire program around this. So we've got six different pillars of which results is one of them, but there are many others, product knowledge, strategy, and so on. Those pillars then have metrics associated with them that we measure, and then we built out a whole development plan for our sales teams around that. And we're in the process, we rolled it out a couple of months ago, and now we're starting to build out a similar sort of thing for sales leaders so that they can get a better understanding of, I think I'm good, I'm doing a great job, where can I get better? Right. Uh, what advice would you give for, to new sales enablement leaders? Work with your sales teams. Um, the biggest success that I've had and the reason that 
I think we've been able to do as much as we've done at ADP is if you come in and you say, I know how to do this better than you're doing it today, people start to shut down. But if you work with them, understand what's working today as well as what they think needs to be fixed and you help them build solutions around what needs to be fixed, people tend to embrace it more. What's the biggest takeaway from today for you? I think what we're doing is fantastic. And I think that once we get this society formed and we've got a good structure around it, it'll be a great way for us to share uh, ideas and share best practices. I think there's still, we're a profession that's in its infancy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what a lot of the debate has been is, uh, how do we take a, a profession where there's a handful of companies that have really built out right. true sales enablement and then there's a bunch that are starting out. How do we define what it should be? Because maybe what we did isn't the best way to do it, right. but it's one of a handful of tracks that we can go down and, and we're working through it. And I think it'll be great when it's all finished.